telling how great he is, how awesome he's been to you. And so we say, they lift up Jesus above all of the gods. Sing with me. Oh, we and friends, we are so blessed to have you in the maze this afternoon. Thank you very much for laying aside everything and you know coming to bless us. I do really appreciate you. Please, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yes, Praise we can. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Of course, I remember you. <laughs> you're one of my Manchester, my Kenyan people. Huh? I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Evangelist Bola and the team for the opportunity to share the word and the gospel this morning. It's just um, nine o'clock, just after 9 a.m. here in Canada. Um, we are in North America, Canada. People always get Canada confused with America, but I am in Canada in um, North America. And, you know, I just want to, I'm so grateful to be on this platform. I, Deborah, is a ministry that I admire from the time that myself and Evangelist Bola met when I came to Manchester a few years ago. Our spirit connected, and like Elizabeth and Mary, when they met, you know, the baby, Bible says the baby jumped, leaped inside of Elizabeth. And I believe God did the same thing with, um, you know, Evangelist Bola and I. Before I go into the word, I just want to recognize my beautiful sister, Minister Abby. Joku. Um, I hope you are still there. Um, God bless you, woman of God. I love you. Yourself and Pastor Emeka are such a blessing to my family, and I'm so grateful that I, I'm able to share this platform with you and so many of the other amazing speakers. I did love that, um, the storytelling. I was, you know, that was quite amazing. Praise God. I have a few minutes, and I want to go straight into the Word of God this morning, or rather this afternoon. You know, I was very excited to be a part of this conference um, because of the ministry of Deborah. The ministry of Deborah is one that I'm very passionate about. I run a Deborah's Company mentorship program as part of my all-woman ministry. And so I was, you know, I was so excited when um, Evangelist Bola asked me to be a part of this because anything to do with the gathering of the Debras, you will find me there, inspiring and empowering women to rise up and to take their places. So in the next few minutes, I just want to share a word, a message with you from the text in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. And if, you know, if you are being blessed, please make sure you put, you know, you type an amen in the chats just so that we know that you are being blessed. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10. It reads in the NIV version, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Verse seven, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then verse eight, the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man in verse 9. He says, where are you? Somebody say, where are you? Where are you? And the man answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. I was afraid because I was vulnerable. I was afraid because I was exposed. And so I hid. The Lord showed me in that scripture as I was preparing for today, and I want to talk to the Debras, all of the Debras that are listening to me on this platform, and those who will be listening later on. The Lord showed me that there are Debras who are hiding, like Adam and Eve. 
and are not functioning where God wants them to be for various reasons or for a mistake or several mistakes they have made, either for a wrong decision or several bad decisions they have made over the course of their life. There are women on this platform with different reasons for hiding. And I want to speak to each and one, each or each and every one of you this morning, based on the, some of the stories of other women in the Bible. There is a Deborah that is listening to me right now. Your story is similar to Mrs. Lot. You cannot accept what you have had to give up, what you have lost, or what was taken from you. And because of that, you your life has turned into a pillar of salt. Your life is dried up. Your life has become a monument. Your life is dead inside and tastes bitter. Your bitterness is against God and against people for losing everything you have had. And because of that, you simply refuse to move forward. You refuse to let go. You refuse to get past the past, to, you know, to let go of the past and embrace what God wants to give you. But I'm here to tell you today that God says he wants to turn your bitterness into sweetness. Amen. God wants to turn your bitterness into sweetness. Now, there is also a Deborah whose story is like that of Goma. You are hiding away, again, like Adam and Eve hid away from God because of your past life. You are afraid of being judged and looked down upon for your lifestyle choices and your profession. So instead of having to deal with the criticisms and the judgment from others, you have chosen to stay out of the limelight, hiding in the background where you are inconspicuous and you draw no attention to yourself. But today, God wants me to tell you that he's calling you to own your story. God is calling you to own your story and to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light because he has a need of you. Now, there is another Deborah whose story is like that of Tamar. You too, you are hiding because you have been deceived. You've been lied to. You've been abused. You've been rejected. You've been abandoned by people who told you that they loved you and you trusted them. And now your heart is broken. Your heart has become cold. Your spirit is broken and you are filled with bitterness, resentment, and even hatred. You are emotionally and mentally diff indifferent. You don't care. You are disconnected from any emotions and desires to do anything or to make something out of your life. You have become self-absorbed. You you're protecting yourself from any further pain. You don't want to get hurt anymore. But today, Deborah, God wants me to tell you that he's, he wants to make all things beautiful again in your life. He wants to make all things beautiful again in your life. And it's time. There is another Deborah listening to me right now. You are like Oprah. You have the opportunity to make a difference and become great just like Ruth had. But instead, you chose a path that led you to be forgotten and insignificant. Whilst Ruth, on the other hand, who had the same opportunity as you, has moved on and she has become successful. You are now ashamed and you are unable to regain the lost opportunities. And it's caused you to, to go into hiding. It's caused you to run away and hide. But today, God wants me to tell you, if you're listening to me, that he wants to open the doors that no man can shut again in your life. Amen. God wants to reopen those doors again for you if you would just rise up. And finally, there are, some, there are some Deborahs listening and watching me. Your story is like that of Hagar. You have You've caused pain and hurt to your family and to your loved ones and to your relationships because of your overnight success, because of your position, because of your new fame. You have damaged relationship and trust, and now you are living with that shame and you're living with that guilt of what your actions have done to your families, to your friends, and you are hiding away as well, unable to face people again. But today, God wants me to tell you that he wants to turn your morning into dancing. He wants to turn your morning into dancing if you will just rise up. Many of us today, we are filled with pride. We're filled with ego that will not allow us to come out openly and to show our vulnerability, to show our transparency. We do not want to be seen as weak. 
So instead, we are hiding behind a mask, behind a wall. But today, God has sent me here to tell you that he wants the walls of Jericho to come down in your lives because he has need of you. And it is because God has need of you that he has sent me here. He has sent me on this assignment to tell you that he is with you. He loves you. Despite all of the mistakes, all of the errors, he knows all the sins that we have committed, and yet he still loves us. And he still wants us, to, he still wants to use us to serve his purpose in our generation. Amen. And so as I listened to the speakers earlier, I thank God for the spirit of unity, for being able to join my voice to charge each and every one of us to rise up and to defend the faith that has been entrusted to us. So I want to ask every Deborah that is here right now, where are you in your life? Where are you hiding? Why are you hiding? It's time for you to come out of hiding and to take your place and to defend the faith. To take your place and to defend the faith because God has need of you. Amen. God has need of you. Hallelujah. There are seven pillars that, go that governs our society. They are the foundations or the values or mountains that hold each nation together. And let me tell you something that without these seven pillars, no nation can stand strong. These pillars are the pillar, but number one pillar is the family. The second pillar is that of education. The third pillar is that of business. The fourth pillar is that of media. The fifth pillar is that of arts and entertainment. The sixth pillar is that of government. And the final pillar is that of religion. And in our case, the church and ministry. Every single Deborah on this platform, on this conference, is called, just like in the days of Judges, chapter 4 and 5, when things were not going right, and the nation of Israel was under threat, and people did not know what to do. Bible says, Deborah arose as a mother in Israel to represent God, to take her place on the front line, and to defend the faith of her nation. And God is calling every single woman on this platform to do the same, to rise up in the home, to rise up in the education system, to rise up in, the, in, the, in business, to rise up in the media, to rise up in the arts and entertainment, to rise up in government, and to rise up in the church, and to defend the faith that has been entrusted to you. That is why you are called a Deborah. Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet, as a Deborah to your nation and to your country. Debras are needed in the family to defend the faith of the family against weapons of mass destructions that, that is daily aimed at the family institution. Domestic violence is on the increase. Divorce is on the increase. Abortion is on the increase. Child abandonment, addiction, gender confusion, parenting issues, child trafficking, pedophilia. All these things are on, in, on the increase. And God has given the ministry, the pillar of the family, to some Debras. Debras are called, to some, some Debras are called with the anointing to be a stay at home mom to raise the family. Some Debras are called to work with the families, to defend the faith of the families. Where are you? Debras are called into the business to defend the faith that God has entrusted into businesses. And it's time to rise up and restore the good work Restore the, good, you know, restore the work ethics. Promote and encourage best practices. Do business with people and organizations who are promoting the same values and, and, and principles as us. Rise up and do business. God has gifted you with the anointing for business. Use it to try to move the wealth out of the hands of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. You are a Deborah. Rise up. Debras are called into the education system to defend the faith, to defend the faith. Our governments are bringing in ungodly syllabuses. They're bringing in programs. They're bringing in un, you know, ungodly education.
education. Can you imagine that in, you know, in Canada here, you know, children as young as four in kindergarten are taught that they can choose whatever gender they want to be. And the parents are not allowed to discourage them. A boy is taught in school at the age of four that he can choose to be a girl. That is our education system. So where are the Debras? What are they teaching in your children's schools? What are they teaching in the education system? And God has called you as a professor. He's called you as a school board trustee. He's called you as teachers. He's called you as mentors. Rise up and defend the faith in the education system. Let me tell you something. If you don't rise up and defend the faith, many of us will be paying our, our children's school fees, paying for them to become atheists. Paying the school fees and allowing the school fees, the teachers, to teach and indoctrinate our children to become atheists without a, without a need for God. It's time for the Debras to rise up and to defend the faith in our education system. Amen. Many Debras are called into the media. There are so many, you know, many of you called as social media influencers, called as media creators, as artists and celebrities. You need to rise up and take your place and defend the faith, restoring and godly entertainment, restoring godly information and education that builds up our society. We have to stop judging and tearing down what we are seeing in the media and rise up and get involved. Amen. We need the media to create and not to destroy. We need the media to equip, to protect, to cover without exposing and disrobing people. We need the media to bring forth entertainment, information, and education and news that are true, that are noble, that are right, that are pure that are lovely, that are admirable, that are excellent, and that are praiseworthy. It's time for the Debras who are in the media to rise up and to defend the faith. It's also time for the Debras who are called into the arts and the entertainment pillar to represent the creativity that God has blessed you with. Represent God. God has blessed so many people with creativity, with the ability to create. There are musicians, there are singers, there are dancers, actors, athletes, writers, painters, designers, and many other talented skills that God has given to tell stories, to share ideas, and to inspire many. Let me tell you something that the ability and the inspiration of an artist, a creator, or an inventor originated from God. It comes from God. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus chapter 31, verse 3 to 5, and it says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, and with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, in silver, in bronze to cut and to step and to set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of crafts. It is God who has placed the ability in artists to be creative. So rise up, Debras, in the arts and the entertainment industry and take it back for God. There are too many negatives, unholy, deliberate, idolatry and blasphemous views that are daily being projected to us. And so as Debras, we cannot afford to leave the arts and the entertainment pillar of our society to take us back to the days of Sodom and Gomorrah or for us to be given over to a depraved mind or degrading passion. God is calling every Debra who has an anointing and gift and talent in the arts and entertainment industry to arise and defend the faith. Rise, and, uh, rise up and honor God in that industry and say no to degrading passions and bring us back to, nat to the natural God intended ways of living and working. We need Debras who are movie producers, magazine editors, authors, artists, video game creators, social medias, program creators, musicians, athletes, and actors who will acknowledge God, stand up for righteousness, and not satisfy their own belly for fame or success. 
Debras who will promote and drive family and godly values. That our children and the future generation can follow. So we need the Debras to rise up and to defend the faith in the arts and entertainment industry. Finally, we need the Debras to rise up in government. As because you know what? You know, the government pillar is as significant as the other pillars to keep the structure and the foundation of a nation secure. The government's role and purpose is to govern and to lead the country, to protect it and to provide for its citizens and to represent the nations to the world. Can I tell you that a stable government provides four essentials? Number one, security and protection. Number two, provision. Number three, employment. And number four, general welfare. The government is supposed to create values, missions, and rules, and regulations that govern the nation and ensures that we adhere to them. It's very important that Debras get involved in government and politics. We must rise up and defend the faith by getting involved. We've got to become like Daniel. We've got to become like Esther. And we've got to become like Deborah at every level of policy making. Because did you know that it was a woman who insisted and fought for prayers to be taken out of school? And God can use a Deborah to bring prayers back into school. It was a woman who challenged and changed the law to, um, to allow black women to vote. It was a woman who sat on the bus and said she is not going to move. It was a woman who fought and asked for women's rights to vote and equal opportunity. Women are not just homemakers. We are policy makers as well. Again, women are not just homemakers. We are policy makers as well. And it's time for every Deborah to get up and get involved in politics and government to bring our nation back to God. And finally, God has called the Deborahs to rise up in the religious religion pillar, in the church and in the ministry. Did you know that religion has always been a central aspect of every civil society because it makes it a, it's very it's, it's a very significant portion of our institution but today as of today many countries have forgotten their faith weekly church attendance is down amongst many of our young people most people consider religion church faith of no importance anymore but regardless of our beliefs of what we are hearing and what we are seeing in the media, God is still alive and people still need God. Whether they realize it or not, whether they know it or not, whether they want to admit it or not, God created man for relationship and there is always going to be a void in man without God. And so it's important that Deborahs rise up and take their places in the church, take their places in the ministry. Deborahs must take their place in, in leading and restoring our nation, our homes, our communities back to God. Bible says in the book of Joel chapter 2, it says in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. God is raising up both men and women to take their places on the front line in the church because there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. I know there are people that believe that women should not be ministers in the church, but let me tell you what the Bible says. Bible tells me that in the book of Acts chapter 21 verse 9, that Philip had four unmarried single daughters who prophesied. Bible says in Romans 16 verse 1 to 2, Paul described Phoebe as a minister. Priscilla and Aquila were active in ministry and hosted a church in their home at Ephesus and later in Rome where they ministered as pastors and leaders. The Bible demonstrates to us from Genesis to Revelation that God calls and equips both men and women because we have, we have individual anointings and roles to perform in the work of the ministry. Therefore, Deborahs rise up in church. 
rise up in the ministry and defend the faith. You see, if every Deborah rose up in the seven pillars of our society to defend the faith, we shall surely secure and deliver our nation from the, from the enemy that is roaming around looking for how to destroy our nation. There is no hiding place from God. You cannot hide from God. God knows where you are. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 12 says, I, can, I cannot escape from your spirit. I cannot hide from God. Adam and Eve tried to hide from God because they were ashamed because of their mistakes, because they opened themselves up to the enemy. But Bible says, into the sea of forgetfulness, he has placed all of our sins. God has, for, God has forgiven you. God has forgotten it. God has cleansed you. He's created in you a clean, a clean heart. He's renewed the right spirit within you. So rise up as a Deborah in your generation and do the work of the ministry in one of the seven pillars of society. Jeremiah 23 verse 24, I want to leave you with this. It says, can a Deborah, now this is my translation, it says, can a Deborah hide herself in hiding places so, so that I do not see her, declares the Lord. Can a Deborah hide herself in hiding places so I do not see her, declares the Lord. Despite the, despite the garment of shame or guilt or fear or resentment, God sees you and God has need of you. This message today is, is for every woman just like me. We've got baggages, we're messed up, we feel inadequate. We feel unqualified. We feel as if we are inexperienced like Mary. We lack the self-confidence and the courage to rise up and lead. But God is asking you a question. He says, where are you? Where are you? It's time to stop hiding, ladies. It's time to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. God has need of each and every one of us. God has need of you in the home. God has need of you in business. God has need of you in the education system. God has need of you in the media. God has need of you in arts and entertainment. God has need of you in government and politics. And God certainly has need of you in the church and in the ministry. And regardless of your background, there is a place for you to serve the purpose of God in your generation. And I pray that God will give each and every one of us the grace to rise up and to defend the faith. I pray that we will not be replaced. And I pray that we will serve the purpose of God in our generation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Jesus, take your place. Take your place. Come on home. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We invite you into our midst, Jesus. Oh, your presence is heaven to me. Yes, it is. Yes, your presence.